here on the second page, we will look at some because the Bible is full, absolutely full of references, both as metaphor and as a practical example of plans when speaking about faith, when speaking about uh, pro issues in life, uh, when speaking about um, so many, so many things, especially the soul, the division of the good and the evil. We we'll start from a very um, good one in Numbers 11.5. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. So here, just to let you know, the variety of, of um, uh, plants that they were available at that time, because when we think about Egypt now, we think about a desert land. Uh, um, we think about struggle, but at that time, it was uh, one of the most... Um, uh, rich country um, of the ancient world uh, they and, uh, definitely was very fertile especially next to the Nile and so the, the 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 quality the quantity of vegetation was um, it was incredible and then the fish costed nothing because anyone would, was fishing on the, the Nile. Nobody really paid and went to the fish market. A lot of the things that you buy was um, meat products, milk products, and then uh, some uh, vegetables if you didn't have a garden. Because we're thinking about uh, the people, just to give a context. For 400 years, the Israelites were living amongst the Egyptians in peace because they were escaping the famine and then they um, they were uh, uh, welcomed in the land of Egypt because at that time uh, the regent of Egypt was their brother Joseph. They sold into slavery, etc., etc. We will talk about Joseph another time because he's such an important figure. So, so they came as refugees at first, and then they just uh, started living there because all the pe all the all the people of Israel moved to Egypt. But then the Egyptians uh, were at the at the death of Joseph, uh, the the government and the control uh, was re-centralized into the hands of the Egyptian Egyptian people, as is normal because that's Egypt. And so they didn't have then a political figure in the, in the state who could look after their interests. And so the Egyptians, they saw an opportunity in enslaving them because there was the, they, they didn't have any protectors anymore. And so then they became slaves uh, or... But, uh, obviously, Egyptian slavery is nothing comparable to... Um, the slavery um, of ancient Rome or the slavery of the um, modern times the, in, in the West Indies, America, those type of slaveries were beyond cruel. Something that we can even hardly imagine, regardless of how many stories, how many books we read. It's just heartbreaking what people had to suffer in Jamaica in the um, lower states of the US and so many other places. But even the Roman slavery was really, really harsh. It was terrifying. But definitely, the, of course, if you're a slave, always your life is terrifying. Regardless, it's horrible. But in, in, in Egypt of that time, it was more like um, servitude. Of course, they didn't have any rights as we would think. They have. They didn't have uh, a salary. They, they just. They were definitely um, pushed to the uh, limits of society. They were like re reject. Uh, but um, it's definitely not the same as the modern slavery, you know. Um, but still, very harsh. The only difference were, was um, when, at the time of Moses. The tension between the Egyptians and the Israelites was so uh, out of control that 
the Pharaoh of the time um, ordered the massacre of as many Israelite infants as possible, seeing that happen even at the time of Herod, because he wanted to find the Mashiach, and so he had sent an army to kill all the firstborn and all the males that they were newborns until two years old. And so the same happened at the time of Moses. They were either thrown into the Nile and be, and then um, uh, killed either by swords or fed to the crocodiles, terrifying because the same thing, because <laughs> it's a cycle. It, 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 uh, history repeats itself over and over. Same thing happened. Uh, the, so, uh, the origin of the Nile, Nakagera, the same thing happened to uh, the Watusi children as well. So uh, that was um, interesting to think about. And that's why they, uh, they prayed to uh, be saved and sent out from Egypt. So that was very interesting just to look at the variety of the plants. But we'll talk about Egypt and the Israelites uh, another time. Can papyrus grow where there is no marsh? Can reeds flourish where there is no water? Papyrus is a very interesting plant because uh, it was the number one source for, um, for um, basically paper in a way. And here this says it's very important that it needs a lot a lot of uh, humidity, a lot of uh, um, um, basically uh, fertile soil to flourish. And here we have again another important uh, confirmation that Egypt at that time was a very fertile place. Then Psalm 104 and 14, you cause the grass to grow for the livestock and plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth. Obviously, you is a, it's um, referred to Yah that created all of this for humankind to, 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 to live off. Matthew 13, 36, 43. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them, sow them is, in, is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are angels, just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. This is a beautiful metaphor and how in gardening you need to separate the weed from uh, from the wheat because the weed often suffocates the plant or carries diseases, as we will see when we talk about the biology of plants. And so the same thing with people. You are who your friends are. You cannot surrender yourself with people who have um, a bad influence and or they are unbelievers. Uh, because when the day of judgment will come, you don't want to be caught up with them and be burnt in the lake of fire. Then Matthew 15, 13, he answered, Every plant that my, my heavenly father has not planted will be rooted up. Very important because this is not only a metaphor of the fact that uh, every every person that is not in the book of life will be sent to fire as the one before, but also a confirmation that there are a lot of plants or, or creatures that they were artificially um, created by either fallen angels or mankind as and they were not meant to be uh, created and so they will be uprooted. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I, I in him, he it is the bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing so it's um, another uh, metaphor of the body of Yahshua you know um, 
that you you need to be grafted in his uh, in in his um, spiritual uh, community to be able to be then granted the salvation. And there is, they use always using plants as metaphor. First of all, because they, we see them behave in life like this, of gathering together, and because you need to give a visual to people to understand a concept. But also because plants, they're so ancient, and they 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 have such a, a central uh, role in our life that. They're the perfect, uh, perfect element to create a metaphor on. And, and then there is John 15:5. I'm the vine, you are the branches. Yeah, I read that one. So there is the Revelation 22. Then in the angel show me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of Yah and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There is so much in this uh, two verses. First of all, another confirmation, um, uh, the, the water of life, water from heaven, comes from Yahweh. The lamb is obviously Yeshua. The, the the word who became flesh and then the tree of life that has 12 kinds of fruit one for each month of the year imagine and the tree of life there and unfortunately was uh, taken as a um, um, as a tradition also from uh, from Asian culture but we'll talk about it more as we go along um, and uh, so, unfortunately, they have corrupted uh, the imagery of the tree of life uh, with uh, pagan uh, uh, pagan stories. It's a with especially a Babylonian uh, legend that I will talk about maybe when I talk about the fall. And the most important aspect about the number twelve is that not only it describes the uh, month of the year. He also describes the number of the chiefs that were appointed by the king of Israel. He also uh, describes the 12 tribe of Israel because each son of Jacob uh, then in, inherited uh, uh, as part of their, um, their agreement with Yahweh, um, inherited this uh, uh, promise, this dream of becoming a nation within a nation. The most important, obviously, patron is Joseph because from him we have two tribes. We have Manasseh and Ephraim. Both are sons of Jacob, uh, sorry, sons of J Joseph, who himself is son of Jacob. Why? Because Joseph was prince, because he saved all his people when they were in Egypt. But remember, if Ephraim is always prince and Judah is, is king, so Always important to understand this, but we will talk about this more when we uh, probably dis discuss the tribe and the the testament of the twelve patriarchs, the the promise at the end of Armageddon on uh, basically how the people of Israel will be organized and uh, uh, the inheritance uh, uh, come going forward. Then, in the first book of Adam and Eve, in chapter one, verse one. On the third day, God planted the garden in the east of the earth on the border of the world eastward. You see border because there is limit to, to the land beyond which towards the sun rising one finds nothing but water. <laughs> you see? And this is another information because the, the world is limited. The, there, is, there is no ball. We're not spinning around the emptiness of the universe, I mean, it's bogus, <clears throat> that encompasses the whole world and reaches to the borders of heaven and to the north of the garden where um, there is a, a sea of water, clear and pure to the taste, unlike anything else. 
so that through the clearness thereof one may look into depths of the earth amazing so uh when the 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 water of the garden obviously it's uh, clear water um there is no salt <laughs> you know i know i feel people are thinking that i'm obsessed with sea water but it's it's so central because water is probably <laughs> Uh, one of the most important element is repeated thousands of times in th in the Bible. You will not even believe. Because water is it's already in verse 1. Heaven is the first thing. Then earth. But then the, well, about the, the, you have the void, darkness. But then you have waters. So if you understand water, then you understand the base of life. You see, because heaven is the ethereal, is the atmosphere, is the air, is where uh, then there is the firmament. It's something so um, so above our comprehension. Then earth is where is the base, where we are sitting on, and then the waters is so mysterious because it brings forth. Uh, so much uh, because uh, it's, it's nourishing life, although it's composed of inorganic um, compounds, you know, inorganic ions. All oh, right, sorry, inorganic uh, ele chemical elements. <clears throat> <clears throat> of course, now that we understand this importance about wa uh, water and plants. We know that light was made in day uh, number number two. Sorry, light was made in day number one, which means the light precedes sun and moon. Because sun was made in day number four, but we have already plants in day number two. So the sun, obviously, it's um. Is it's, it's helping for sure the the, the 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 plants to carry out uh, important functions like photosynthesis and all of that, but the sun is not the absolute uh, light uh, projector. There is also the the light of day in itself that is helping all of these chemical uh, and biological processes to 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 happen. Okay. And this explains why you have plants in almost any environment, different different types of plants, but you have even plants with no access of sunlight in the deep waters or in the, the dark forest or, or even in Finland where there is a, uh, so many months of darkness and very few light, few hours of light, still you have vegetation. And um, so... It's an amazing, uh, amazing thing. But you can see here in the picture, I saw underwater um, plants. Yeah, they also have fluorescent in the sense that they have light within themselves. It's, a, it's, it's so beautiful. <laughs> so thank you so much for <clears throat> your attention on this uh, uh, transitional section where we saw a few more examples of plants in the Bible used as metaphor and as well as descriptive so we can see what plants were available at that time and we see they're identical to the plants we have now so another important uh, confirmation that the time scale that they uh, provide of thousands of years of evolution uh, doesn't really apply because otherwise between then and now we should have different species we shouldn't have a cucumbers we shouldn't have melon some people would say oh well that's localization is just a adaptation translation to what we have now but i mean we can't constantly have these ideas that we are adapting things to current times otherwise you will uh, lose the originality of the text and um, we see the lamps landmarks were the same at that time as now so I guess the plant pretty much the same so the evolution theory already uh, has so many um, uh, 
uh, plot holes uh, because again we should have many many more um, uh, examples of uh, plant diversity when we have different plants is because of hybridism and not because of evolution okay well thank you once again for your attention so i'll see you in the next section when we will concentrate mostly on the scientific part now that we have clarified the biblical aspect of things um, and i'll see you in the next section uh, so you can tap the bell to get notified to subscribe and thank you so much again and i'll see you next time bye, -bye. Ciao, ciao.